a section 2.2, the power rule. Now, um, this power rule is, uh, uh, they're using um, n is a rational number. Now, they're just being um, very careful. Since we can't exactly do the proof without uh, some logic help anyway, um, and I'll point that part out, um, I don't really care if it's rational or uh, irrational, you know, so it's all real numbers, so we don't care. Uh, n can can be anything here. Um, we'll just assume that. So here, power rule, what we want to do is say that f of x is equal to uh, x to the n, and then uh, we would like to find uh, uh, the derivative, so uh, where um, n is uh, any, um, let's see, and I think uh, any real number is the way they, they go ahead and say that. And some of this is a little easier in, in, than others, but so n is any real number. Well, let's look at, um, uh, well, let me write the rule, then f prime of x is n x to the n minus 1. Okay, so some examples of actually using this. If I say f of x equals x squared, that fits the power rule. Uh, g of x equals x to the negative 3, that fits the power rule. Uh, h of x equals uh, x to the uh, 3 halves. Uh, that fits the power rule. n is any real number. Um, I could go one more here. Um, let's use, uh, what do I, f, g, h, um, I don't want to use k, so I'll use uh, uh, p of x is equal to x to the pi. Okay, pi is a constant. Um, so, if I have any of these according to this power rule, f prime of x then is, well, bring the 2 down, x to the 2 minus 1, which is 2x. x to the 1 is x. Uh, g prime of x is x, uh, oops, forgot my negative 3, negative 3 to the negative 3 minus 1. So, you know, this is pretty simple, but it doesn't mean you can't mess it up, uh, you know, because I've got negatives floating around and so forth. I can screw that stuff up um, just as well as anybody. So, h prime of x here is 3 halves x to the minus 3 halves. And, um, and then finally, uh, p prime of x is equal to, I'll have to put it down here, I have pi x to the pi minus 1. Why did I say minus 3 halves? Back, back up here, um, I'm not sure what I did there. Uh, I think I, I was just writing stuff down. Um, I, I meant... Yeah, so, sorry about that. Again, it's probably not the last time I'll screw things up. So, h prime of x uh, is equal to, bring down the 3 halves, x to the 3 halves minus 1. That's what I wanted to do. And so that's 3 halves x to the 1 half. Uh, but that's, the p prime of x is pi x to the pi minus 1. Okay, so there are a bunch of examples. You know, it's just whatever you have, you can do it. Um, well, another example, so, you know, for instance, suppose I have, now I'll just do f of x again. Suppose I have f of x is 1 over the square root of x. Well, actually, that's a power, because that's just 1 over x to the 1 half, but that is x to the negative 1 half. And so, f prime of x 
here is minus one half x to the minus one half minus one. And so that's minus one half x to the negative three halves. Now, so um, on the proof, uh, what they do is they do um, just the positive integer case, and then uh, they uh, save for later um, in section 2.5 how to do integers and rationals and, and so forth. You know, just to give some idea, uh, looking at their positive integer case, you know, so what happens is that if I have, let's just do like x cubed, all right? So if I have x cubed, then if I'm looking at that derivative, that's the limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h cubed minus x cubed over h. Now, what happens with that in that whole game of the numerator, trying to get an h to factor out, um, notice that, at least for positive integers where I know how to do this, um, I, when I multiply that out, I will always get that x cubed. So if that was a, uh, instead of cubed, it was to the fourth, well, I'd still get an x to the fourth and a minus x to the fourth. So, so you see that first term here, it, when you multiply all this out, is always going to cancel with that one. Okay, and then the other terms all have an h in them. And so this first term uh, is uh, 3x squared h, and then plus 3xh um, uh, squared, and then plus h cubed. Now, I know that, and you, you know, you could write that all out to, to get that, but it is the case, and then over h. So this disappears. But now notice what happens, and, and all these, no matter what uh, positive power I put up here, it works kind of this way, is that the first term, this first term is always going to be nx to the n minus 1 times h. Always that first term. Now notice with all the other terms, all the other terms are going to be multiplied by h squared or h cubed or, you know, up to whatever n was, you know, we'll get an h to the n. But notice that when I factor out an h, anything with an h squared or higher still has an h in it. And so then when I put in h equals zero, it disappears. So it's this first term is the only one that's left around you know, when I'm dividing by h, because those will cancel. And that first term always has the form nx to the n minus 1 when you multiply something like this out. Okay, so that's what's going on. That is how the proof works. Now, to, to really do a nice job with the proof, um, you, you shouldn't just do, you know, in the, in the textbook, um, they just do a bunch of dot, dot, dots, which is kind of what I'm doing here. And eh, that's not really a great justification, but it's not bad. Um, but at any rate, that's what's happening. And so that's why we'll get that rule of n x to the n minus 1. And that's for positive integers. Uh, but uh, for all real numbers, it's going to work that same way. You know, so f prime is that for x to the n here. So, um, so that's our power rule.